core data quality because it's not core, okay, but it is certainly not pristine. Uh, it's a usable system, but when you start looking in here, there are some problems, such as, yeah, we've got, you know, 97% of the articles have a title on them, uh, but, you know, if you're looking for page number issue or volume and, and number, uh, you know, then the, the percentages are quite a bit less. Uh, so there were some other things, you know, dates. You know, roughly two-thirds of the articles had some date information ranging from, I don't know, minus 17,000 B.C. to, you know, <laughs> 2942 or something like that. Okay. So we did do some cleanup on the data. Uh, we did some, I'm sorry? No. We did some uh, date additions, uh, meaning that we looked at the, the articles, looked at their bibliographies, looked at the articles that cited them, and inferred a date for them. And that got us from about 66% having a date to about 90% having a date. We did some spelling corrections. Uh, you know, these things start off as OCR. And uh, so you see lots of words like introduction instead of introduction. That's Matt's favorite example. Uh, so Keith did a lot of work looking for low frequency terms that were a very small Levenstein distance away from high frequency terms. And then the low frequency term was still in there. It was still indexed that way, but it was also indexed with the high frequency word, which is presumably a correct spelling of it. Uh, Tony did some noun phrase extraction. I did some categorization of this by ACM categories because, you know, 30,000 of them had already been categorized with the ACM stuff, so that seemed like a good enough training set to apply to the rest of the 1.4 million. Okay, so I'm going to do a quick overview of the user interface, the things that are in here. Uh, the first thing to notice here is there is no result set list right here. Okay, there is a result set list, but it is not the focus of the work. Okay, what you start off with, the top panel is your total query that's going on. And in the bottom panel, we start building the query component by component and seeing what the effects of these components are. Uh, you can start off by entering query terms down in here. They're ORed together. We also get some count information, or we can take away some of these components that are ORed together. They're phrase queries. Then we can add a new term filter and bring in uh, another set of queries that will be added onto these. And you can have any number of those. You can turn them on and off should you want to. You can browse the ACM. Uh, when you do a query, you get information about the result set size. You also get information about the change in result set size having done this most recent action. So, for example, here we're seeing two queries, latent semantic indexing and principal components analysis. I should say or principal components analysis. And over there, date filter, we've got uh, an end date of 1995 put in there for the heck of it. Okay, so that dropped off 20,000 items from our result set when we put in that date filter, leaving us with a total result set size of 1,417. Okay, um, there's noun phrase work that's been done here. You know, we, the noun phrases were extracted beforehand and added to the index. So whatever the common noun phrases are in the result set shows up there. In the bottom, it's you know whatever the common noun phrases are in your currently uh, current query component. Okay. Timeline shows up here. This is the uh, total query for latent semantic indexing or principal components analysis. And then this part is the bit before 1995 and the white, whiter part is uh, you know what's been excluded by the date filter. Um, and then uh, within the component itself, there's a similar sort of timeline that shows, uh, you know, the yellow one is what came from latent semantic indexing, and the red one is what showed up from principal components analysis, and the blue is the total of them. And if you were to hover over the uh, down phrases on the side, then a new line would get drawn in here, and you could see, oh, well, if I hover over something like uh, covariance matrix or uh, dimensionality reduction, you know, I can see what would happen to that result set before I actually do that. Okay, so that's kind of the UI overview. Uh, this is all on the query page. There's other things up here, you know, the results page or a document uh, page that shows you the text of the document and the highlighted search within that, so on and so forth. 
But this is really built for a mode of search where you start off, you do some searches, you bring in, drag and drop uh, terms from the noun phrases or uh, filter things by the ACM tree, build up your result set, shrink it down, take a look at you know how big this thing is, and then you start looking at the results. Okay? Oh, yes. And then there is the magic preceding work button. And we will talk about that. We will talk about that very soon. Okay, so task five, the HCIR meta challenge. This is a, an area where I have sort of limited domain knowledge. I mean, you know, none of you have seen me at an HCI event before. Some of you may have seen me at taxonomy related things. But uh, so uh, in the challenge, there were these various workshops mentioned that were preceding the HCIR workshops. And so the question is, well, is this a complete list of the HCIR relevant workshops? Okay, well, you know, let's find out. Uh, and so what I did, if you remember, there was a search in here like, you know, SIG IR workshop. Let's try faceted search. So we put that in, okay, and we've got, you know, a, a few papers here, uh, you know, and we can add on another query here that I stored away, the uh, workshop on information retrieval in context, and so this has added 15 documents to our result set, and, you know, the normal cooking show thing of you know, here's a query I prepared earlier, <laughs> which is basically just the or of all of those workshop names. Okay, that's, that's all that's in here are those, uh, you know, those few workshop names. And we've got 47 results there. Okay, well, so what we do then is say, well, you know, the question here is what came before? Okay. And what, we're, we, what we have in our current result set are documents that mention these workshop names Maybe it's because they were presented at the workshop. More likely, it's that they are citing something that was presented at that workshop. So we do analyze preceding work. And this looks at the citation information in the current result set. Okay, so we take our current result set. We get the union of all of the things cited by the material in the current result set minus the current result set so that we don't see you know, uh, anything from the workshop that was just cited later. So this is all stuff preceding things in those workshops or cited uh, you know, by works that cite those workshops, et cetera. Okay, well, that goes on for you know, a number of years here. Uh, largely, this work, you know, because it's preceding work, we don't see a bunch of stuff you know, in 2008, because uh, these workshops were pretty much all before 2006. But there are a few things in there where there might be date errors. And so we can you know, limit this down to just the things that are before 2006. Okay, and so now we've got 220 some odd results here. Well, what can we do to, to trim that down a little bit? And I thought, well, you know, I'll make sure that there's, a, you know, kind of a good name in here like workshop. Maybe that'll things, thin things down a bit. And that gave us 104 documents. You know, half of those documents didn't cite something that said workshop. You know, we could have expanded this query to say conference or whatever. This is just what I did the first time through. Now I took a look at the result set. Okay, so here's our result set listing. And the second one in the result set, this tool, a visual tool for querying relational databases. Well, that to me sounds kind of like HCI and IR, although some purists might debate whether databases are IR or not, but uh, I think most of us would be charitably inclined towards that position. Uh, so we take a look at that. And you know, we've got a, a view here the various metadata for this. Uh, we could look at the article itself if we wanted to. But let's look at what this thing cites, because what we really care about is, you know, are there workshops that preceded the HCIR ones? And looking at uh, the first cited, we had the third international workshop on interfaces to databases. Sounds like HCI and IR to me. Okay, and based on this, you know, roughly you know, a few minutes of work. It wasn't quite this fast when I did it, but this is, this is exactly the path that I took in answering this question. I can say, <clears throat> it seems highly, <clears throat> excuse me, 
highly unlikely that the list of workshops is complete. The end. Okay, <laughs> this is good enough. And even if you want to, <laughs> even, <laughs> even if you want to say, well, you know, databases and IR, you know, come on, the probability is vanishingly small if the list is complete. So that's that. All right. So, uh, and I'll leave it to Matt and Keith to take up the next one. How much time do we have? Uh, as quickly as you can, but if you have to take five, up to five minutes, okay. Okay. Cool. So, we'll do the five-minute version. <laughs> the, the full videos of all five questions are solved, and there are them here and then, so. All right, so basically we want to do task two, faceted search in the 80s by Giorgio Marchetti and Nicholas Belkin. Okay, so what we're going to do is uh, jump into the UI and generate faceted search. And do 19, and then search uh, limit it to 1990, um, and we're going to go and check the results, and there'll be one. Okay, um, and this is the seminal paper that we're trying to describe: is does this cover the entire thing? So we go and we'll do that and and show that, um, and and we have pre-cooked all of the text we're going to do, but none of them are live. So each thing we can turn on and off, and we'll show what that means. So uh, you need to turn off all your filters. Okay. So as oh uh, should you? Okay. So. These are all the filters that we're going to do, and you have five. Interesting. Okay. Task two. Yeah, task two is a better task. Okay, let's go to that page. Which no, you got to go to task two and leave this page. We'll explain what happens. Is why is he doing this? The the concept of going and finding what you're doing could be very involved. Could include lots and lots of steps. As you're doing that, you may want to just do it. And better or worse, better or worse. Go on to the eye doctor. You know, you like it. You know. So that's what our system's supposed to do. So if he turns on the first one, we're looking at faceted search. There's 159 results. He'll go and limit this to 1990. Oh, it's rendering different here. And one result, we can click on the one. We could have clicked on the minus 158 to see what left it's at, but you know, and there's the paper. Okay, but we're not satisfied. We can go back to the slide deck. Um, one result, okay, 1990. They, they were the first to mention those two words together in this corpus. Okay, but we want to find out what were the core components. So, yeah, it's fine. Oh, no. Okay, so this is what his paper's on. Everybody knows this. Okay, basically the progressive development, iterative, refinement, uh, having an inverted index, Boolean, queries, ands, and ors living again. Okay, next slide. Okay. Okay, so we want to find out separately what's this, what's that, and do any of these combinations exist before 1990? Okay, next slide. Okay, so faceted, hmm. Okay, well, these are three good ones. Okay, next. Okay, so here's the, you know, some of the terms we're going to use. We're going to use query construction, iterative feedback. Okay, boom, let's go to the system. Okay, so what we're going to try to do is, Think of this as a multi-dimensional search where we might be considering, you know, ands in some cases, ors in others. We can expand it or contract it. And if he turns on filter two, if he clicks there, this is faceted whatever. Okay. And if we look, 1990 to a 12, we could take the date filter on or off. Okay. And if he turns off filter two, clicks on filter three to see it, and then turn on query construction. And as he clicks it, the system responds. And then if he clicks on four and shows you that that's Iterative and feedback, and clicks on that to make it active, and then five shows that one. We're talking about interactive, interactive feedback, not just a database and an intermediary, but actually working with some of these things together. Okay, so what happens is now he's actually looking at this, and we're seeing we have 12 documents. Okay, all right, yeah, good enough. Okay, let's turn those off and let's take a look at five, six, and seven to see if you know maybe if you search this way and found this kind of stuff, thinking that this is what your query's on. Maybe you found, you know, facet and classification. Good enough. Uh, okay, order this together. Okay, great. Boom. And then over to Boolean search and maybe add inverted index. Ah, uh, whatever. Same thing. Okay, keep going. Okay, so then you take and you look at that search in 28 documents. All right, 28. Right. Uh, okay, well, now let's see what happens if you turn on 4, 5, and 6, which are sort of like, you know, inverted and interactive and hmm, two documents. All right, well, we're honing in here. Is this complete? Well, let's bring on facet whatever. If you click on this right. So, for some reason, when you look at faceted whatever with iterative, interactive, so if all the components are put together, instead of just looking for faceted search pre-1990, we also looked at faceted search 1990 preceding, scratch your head and say, yeah, what happens if you didn't reference the papers that did it? So we went, nah. okay, well, let's break it down into components and see what might be there. So we've read the paper about 100 times, highlighted it, gone up, down, left, and right, what some people said we shouldn't do, but, you know, 
we're indexing guys, and we had to throw a UI on it. So this is what we came up with. Other things we could do is, let's say we go over to Boolean Query, Oop, filter seven. What you could do with the system is, on any of these things, you can click on one or more and see the impact of what it might do before you go there. You know, like, hmm, hmm, nah, 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 yeah, yeah, mm, mm, hey, mm, mm. And you can look at, like, what's coming and going. And like, let's so say you did this, and I'm like, what'd you do? And you say, well, this is pretty complicated. Why don't we save where we're at? So then you go to settings, because remember, if we leave the page, we said, whew, you've been doing all this work. You want to save this before you go? Because <laughs> we haven't kept anything. It's all been live and interactive and, you know, Better or worse, better or worse, better or worse. Hi, doctor. Um, so if you save it, it's a URL that you can go back to. And there's your save session. And um, like other papers, when, you, when you're collaborating, we found that very painful. There were five of us, oh, I wouldn't do it that way. I'd do it this way. So we're done, yeah. So, <laughs> so there was no preceding work, none. Uh, Max, a two question, and then everybody's going to vote. Uh, you guys can take your question here. <laughs> okay. Oh, <laughs> have you seen the corpus? Um, we didn't mention things like um, we. You know, when you go and you get coffee and someone secretly replaced your words with bulgers, you know. Um, what we did was we took the index and overlaid and upsampled. Um, so it was one of our larger indices, 10.4 million terms. Yeah, but even after cleaning, yeah. there are quite a few documents that still have you know, rather erroneous fields in them. So yeah. For the work by the And there are documents with postscript sources or something <laughs> in there. Yeah, we, we, the CJK was basically diamonds with question marks. We didn't know how to linguistically parse that. Didn't do so well. Yeah, we could have not cleaned the data, but we wanted to. Right. And, and, and actually, one of the things we considered doing, which is, um, we didn't show up, but if you click on settings, we can actually search what you gave us. We can do an exact search. And we don't do any stemming. We don't do any you know, neat stuff. We don't secretly replace what you've asked for with something else. We just say, fine, that's it. So I if you notice, we said faceted, whatever. It could have been faceting and facet. Doesn't matter. We don't care. Close enough. Just keep going. It's about recall. We want stuff to come back first. Y yeah, we so they start off as One thing you did with the spelling as well as Ron mentioned that we the, uh, the words that were likely misspelled had very low frequency of occurrence and we found uh, uh, terms that were more likely and although that might decrease your precision in other search terms, our goal here was to try and increase all of our documents. We thought that was a that was a fair enough trade off. We didn't we, we didn't remove it from the index, we just added uh, things that we thought were more likely so that I'd like all the challengers to come up here. Everybody else, give them a big round of applause. Okay. And uh, and now is the part where you get to actively participate. Uh, Gary is responsible uh, for tallying votes, and as I've as I've instructed him, uh, there has to be one winner. So uh, the. Uh, he has clearance to use a process he sees, sees fit, but what I recommend it is, if necessary, um, runoff voting uh, to establish that winner uh, if it's highly contentious. So with that, I'm going to uh, take the challengers out for a well-deserved beer, and uh, Gary will tell me when the envelope is ready. Again, a round of applause for these guys. Let's get up. Oh, so this is what the room looks like <laughs> this afternoon.
they didn't tell me what the criteria were, so don't ask. <laughs> uh, um, they're all winners, right? I mean, they, they, they all do a great job. But uh, I, I think what we have to do is we'll, we'll do a simple show of hands, get to vote for one, uh, and um, we'll just go in the order in which they were presented. Uh, so the first one, uh, I can't even remember what they're all called. L3C. L3C. That's a DBLT was the sort of what was on the screen. The second one was uh, uh, Dean Aquarium and Labyrinthum. Occupied. And uh, the third one, Schister. Schister. Um, and the last one, you have to tell me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> now, it's pretty ama amazing. I have, to, I have to just take a minute to say that. We are really going back to like the 70s and 80s search engines again. I mean, you know, <laughs> all this, you know, you, you really have to know what you're doing. You have to actually think and plan. Uh, it, it's kind of cool. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right, so all in favor of uh, number one, uh, the um, uh, ELB. Second one was um, Aquarium. Uh, the uh, third one uh, was Mister. Uh, And the last one was the Elsevier. <laughs> wow, I have to start over. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Keep your hands up. Shall we have a, a, a runoff here? You know, it's actually it's only a three different, so it probably won't matter. Runoff or no? No? All right. So um, we don't need to tell them the scores, do we? Thank you. Yes, go, go, go retrieve them. Uh, no. <laughs> go see. Go seek them. They're still there. You may not be able to retrieve them. That's the difference. I'm sure it's a different way. <laughs> oh, you mean they're <laughs> Yeah, they're up to having problems. Did you find it? All right. Good, good. Well done. Are you ready? Okay. Get the microphone. <laughs> it was a very close vote. Um, I'm going to say that uh, uh, this audience has been uh, much impressed with the really good work that uh, you all did in, in this challenge. Um, but um, um, one group was uh, a little bit ahead, and that uh, was um, uh, Miriam. Wow. Yeah.
Okay, so we ran a little over. Apologize for that, but I really appreciate having all the the time to, to, to for the challenge grants. Oh, the challenge grants, the challenge groups. <laughs> <laughs> We're working on that for next year. <laughs> so um, just to take us a couple of minutes to wrap up, close up. You guys can sit down if you'd like that. Thank you. And um, there, there's one thing that we that we had hoped to have time to talk about. We're not going to have time to get into discussion tonight, but we want to leave you with some closing thoughts, some closing requests, and then ask you to follow up on that. Over the past few years, we've always tried to have a little bit of time at the end of the session to think about where next, what next year. And um, this year, one of the one of the things, one of the themes that the steering committee has been thinking about and has come up over the been suggested at times is. You know, do we want to try to grow this workshop? It's been very effective, I think, as a one-day workshop. But there's always this question of this repeated this question comes up: Do we want to try to expand it to two days, perhaps keeping the current model where we have the short talks, discussions, posters, keep that very interactive, but also perhaps add some more time to get into full research papers? Is that fair? Am I? Okay, so that's sort of the question that we're looking to get feedback on. Obviously, we'll look for any other other sort of feedback that you can offer to us. Um, oh, and what we will do, rather than keeping you tonight, is we'll send you an evaluation survey in the in the mail. It'll be in the mail, and ask you to um, take a few minutes and reflect on what are the useful, what aspects of HCIR are really useful for you. And where would you like to see it go if you had a, a chance to share your vision of where it should go next year? Also, I want to remind you to submit for the IPNM special issue. Um, we, we're very looking forward to that. And um, I just want to close and say thank you to a number of groups. I'm not sure I got everybody on this list. Certainly our sponsors, Google MSR and DECA, Kent State, and the other sponsors. Um, particularly thank Dan Russell for his help. <laughs> And I just want to also thank all the industry participants who came because I think it's uh, it's really great to have that kind of interaction. It's something we've been looking towards. We've had some solid industry participation over the years, and I'm glad to see uh, see more this year. And I hope you come back next year. Any other final things, steering committee, Daniel? Uh, you know the uh, the workshop is about to formally end, but. Uh, it's a tradition at these workshops that a bunch of us go out uh, to, to find a place to have dinner, some drinks. And uh, we talked about going to Zahn in downtown Mountain View. But uh, perhaps the Tide House, let's, depending on how many people are in, we'll find an appropriate venue. So uh, if you're interested, this is not the end, but, uh, but just the beginning. Uh, also, I think. <laughs> Also, uh, you know, the the uh, just to reiterate the you know uh, the look at the look at the uh, special issue. Obviously, if you're if you're interested in, in participating there, uh, you know, just to, to, to help close, I really I really want to thank everyone uh, those who've come over the years, uh, but especially new folks this year. It's really it's really gratifying that something that was uh, we did almost on a whim uh, four years ago. Uh, has turned in, in, into uh, such, a, such a force in the community. Uh, so thank you all. And again, thanks especially uh, to Dan and Google uh, for, for hosting this, uh, honoring a commitment that uh, I'm very, <laughs> very impressed. <laughs> so so thank, and thank, thank all of you.